Can you both talk about your thoughts around just the U.S. government holding Bitcoin, all the regulations that's going on currently, and like, does that stifle innovation? Does it not? Can you just give me your thoughts around all that? The U.S. government stupidly sold their Bitcoin, right? They had Ross Ross Albrecht's Bitcoin. They sold it. They sold it to Tim um, Tim Draper, you know, over in Silicon Valley, right? They've been sellers of Bitcoin stupidly. Um, they they're stupid. The Chinese government is stupid for kicking out the miners, and um, they don't. They don't, you know, Bitcoin avoids narcissistic kleptocrats. And the U.S., China, countries that have mental problems. Uh, it doesn't go well. Uh, so it, will the U.S. change? I think what we've said is that you've got the states have the ability to reformulate a, a course of action and take on the federal government. So that's where it's going to come from. Texas, Wyoming, Florida are, are leading. So um, maybe the Texas uh Teachers Pension Fund or something like that, or the Texas General Municipality Pension Fund says we're going to put a Bitcoin position that starts a ripple effect uh, for all, all over from state to state. Uh, it could see that happening. But at the federal level, I don't see it happening because uh, for the reasons you know that I just said. The, the other piece of this uh, is we recently had um, uh, Whit Gibbs coming from uh, Compass Mining, and he... I don't know if he meant to say it or uh, slipped and said that the United States government was mining Bitcoin in the middle of the country. Let's say that there's a 50-50 probability whether that's happening or not. What is the U.S.'s play? If you were the president of the United States and you said, okay, here's a situation I'm facing currently, we've talked about that, uh, and then here's this new technology, do you shut down the Federal Reserve and go buy a bunch of Bitcoin? Do you start mining? Do you just make the rules uh, a little bit more relaxed so that you can incentivize uh, entrepreneurs and innovators? Like, How do you think about like what should they do? We, we make know- Michael Saylor the Fed chairman <laughs> or the Treasury secretary. Why? And say, um, take the game book, the, the, the playbook you're using over a microstrategy and apply it to the federal government, please, and do it fast so that we don't get disintermediated out of the 21st century. Because at this rate, we're going to be uh, blown out of the water by these smaller, more nimble, more agile, smarter Bitcoin countries. I think I think they don't care about, um, I think, you know, they're in the mindset of we have the U.S. treasuries and the U.S. dollar and we're dominant then. But I, it makes sense geopolitically that they would be mining Bitcoin, just as probably all many nations are mining Bitcoin in order to move secretly around the internet and around the globe because it's it's you know untraceable money and you don't need a seven forty seven to move your gold around and you can just you know finance projects dark you know black ops you know with uh, bitcoin so i think that's probably if if they're mining bitcoin that's probably what they're doing not necessarily to stockpile like any uh, store of value plus you have to if somebody told me oh the federal government's mining bitcoin in the middle of america somewhere i'd have to ask well is it the same federal government that is operating outside of the uh, democratic process that gave us all kinds of political problems in the last 5, 10, 20 years? I mean, if they are mining it, is it, are we going to be sharing in that bounty or are they going to steal no, it? No, no. <laughs> I mean, they could be using our resources to go mine Bitcoin and then they could go leave the country, right? Mm-hmm. So, I mean, these guys are, like I said, they're the corruption is... Uh, it's on a scale that's off the charts. So I, well, I wouldn't I, I, trust them for a one second. I do know for a fact, because a person who worked at the organization told me uh, that in, let's call it 2012, 2013, one of the federal law enforcement agencies, uh, they wanted to conduct uh, cryptocurrency related uh, investigations. And as part of that, uh, they wanted to do some undercover type work. Uh, They either did not believe they could get approved or went for the approval and got denied for a budget approval to purchase Bitcoin. So instead they said, well, they always give us approval for computers. And so they went ahead and they put in a budget approval for mining equipment and they ended up mining Bitcoin. Now, one, they were able to actually get their hands on Bitcoin. Two, it was virgin Bitcoin, so you couldn't trace it, et cetera. And then that was used for uh, investigations. Now, I don't want to uh, exaggerate in terms of my guess is that that was a very small amount, right? And I don't think that people would count that as like the government is holding Bitcoin, right? I think when we talk about that, we're talking about it in terms of it's on, you know, Treasury, Federal Reserve. This is part of our uh, our uh, kind of national strategy. Outside of just that, of putting Michael Saylor or somebody like that to almost pull off a speculative attack, what else would you do? 
They seize the miners in Texas. You right? would seize the miners. Hell yeah. That's probably what they're thinking about. That's the easiest way for the U.S. government to get into Bitcoin businesses. To go down to those huge operations that are in Texas now and seize them. Uh, like they stole, they took the gold in the, in the 30s, right? They seized everyone's gold. The federal government could seize all those miners in Texas. That could trigger a serious conflict with the state of Texas. So I was just going to ask if, <laughs> if they were to go do it. Because that, yeah. that's a pretty bold well, the, uh, gov step the government there. under eminent domain, uh, uh, you know, under uh, under the auspices of national security, can do anything they want to do. They may take your shoes off at the airport. Yeah. Right. Well, like, and again, it's getting worse and worse, and people and the people's rights are being more and more abused. So they they would go down that. That would be, from in my view, that would be the easiest way for the federal government to get in the game pretty fast. That's He's, what I mean. Like our guests, our frequent guests that we've had on Kaiser Report, Jim Rickards, who works with the CIA, war gaming, financial war, and he always said to us on Kaiser Report that the U.S. government would seize all of the gold held on behalf of other nations. So we hold a lot of gold of our own, the United States gold, but we also own gold. We hold gold for other nations. Well, Afghanistan, and that, right? Well, yeah, but nations like Germany. Uh, Correct. You know, but big, I'm just saying they just- Our allies that we would seize their gold. They just reneged on the on the Afghani gold. Yeah, yeah. The Afghans basically, uh, whatever, whoever you want to say is in power now, right? Yeah. Depending yeah. on if it's the official or unofficial. Basically yeah. said, give us our money back. And they said, we're not giving it to yeah. you because we don't know who who's in charge. Yeah, so that's what they would do. That's The, the similar mindset would happen with um, whatever- you know, Bitcoin miners, that makes sense. Like we've already seen with China, what, they, what they're thinking, how they're operating. And I think it, it's a, you know, this Thucydides trap, this relationship between the U.S. and China, the creditor and debtor nation going forward is what to look at for what we might do.